What's up, YouTube? Well, I'm back here again with another lift and talk with Elliot. This time, unlike last time, I gotta be more focused. So I'm pressing this weight over my head today. I wanna make sure that I'm careful, but at the same time, I have a lot that I'd like to chat with you about today, too. Ooh, so I'm doing push press out of the block. <laughs> and I'm supposed to let it drop, because when I let it drop, I let my muscles relax. So I don't want too much stress. Today, I'm working on speed, so how quickly I can move this thing. And I think that what, that's what, and I think that's what Andrew means when he says push fast off of the blocks. So I'm not even going to load this weight on my body. I'm going to push it straight out of the blocks. I'm going to do another one like that. And each time I do it, I'm correcting one of my faults. I could feel feel them. Bad habit. I got to come straight out of the block. So the other day I watched a YouTube video that featured a scientist. He did a study on depression, anxiety, and all kinds of neurosis on creators, content creators, versus people who aren't content creators. I'm a content creator, most of you probably not. And it turns out that content creators go loony. <laughs> There's a lot of pressures, and he even says traumas that are associated with being a content creator. And while I listened to him, I was like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I need to go up and wait here a little bit, but remember today is a speed day. I think if I add 10 more pounds to each side, I can go fast again for another set. We'll see how I feel and then I'll move up or go down. <sighs> All right. <sighs> okay. Straight out of the blocks. No belt just yet. Let's see how I feel. <clears throat> I like it. Feels pretty good. I think I could use more knees. I think I can go up and wait. I think I'm gonna use a belt too. So this whole thing about content creators going crazy make me wonder who is a content creator. Of course, there's guys like me that make YouTube or Facebook or Instagram content as a form of business. Let me see how my belt feels. You could be a stressed out content creator and not have a large following and that's why. Maybe you're creating TikToks, maybe you're creating a podcast, but either way, there's stress of creating content. One of the things that the scientists said about the myriad of bad things that happens to somebody's psyche when they become addicted to creating content, one of which is the cycle of feedback, which is constant which is also not normal for the human brain. He says we're able to associate with just a handful of people at a time. But when you shine, and maybe there's a million at a time, the feedback's gonna be varied. There'll be those that say nice things to you that inflate your ego. And there are those that are gonna say things that are not very nice to you. So your emotional health is tied to the constant checking of comments. If you're creating content, you know what I mean. Comment below if that's part of your flow, bro. You know what I mean? Yo, next set, next working set. Went up a little bit. Went up a little bit and I put on my belt. Oh man, that felt unbalanced. Oh man, I'm in balance. My daughter's telling me that I'm looking like this as I'm pressing. I am in balance. Did you guys know that I my pubic symphysis, the bone that is in between the two sides of your hip bone, like your hip bone, two sides come together at the pubic symphysis, down like between your butthole and your balls? No. Yeah. Mine look like this. A chiropractor took an x-ray of my pelvis once and asked me if I was hit by a bus. I'm jacked up from the core. And so the big enemy is content creator burnout. You're creating a lot of content because you want to create it. Your heart's into it and you're not self-conscious. But once the self-consciousness hits, 
resentment kicks in. Now you're creating content for the algorithm and people. What will kind of happen is the creator will take a break, but then she comes back and if she's a conscious person, she may decide to create content in a different way. But now the viewers that got attached to the other person before the break don't like the new one, right? Because you're evolving, you're changing. You're not Bart Simpson. You're not gonna stay fucking nine years old, 12 years old your entire life. Ha! That's why The Simpsons is the longest running TV show. Like look at what happened to all the childhood stars. They go fucking nuts. And at least in that world, they know they're gonna go nuts. So there's things they could do to, pro to protect you or you could protect yourself. But when you're just a kid with a fucking camera, you don't know what you're doing, you might be in for a world of hurt and nobody could warn you. You're not in Hollywood. You're in bumfuck Florida with nobody to talk to about it because nobody's done this before. Ha! And then here's what happens next. That's what he told, that's what he said. But you realize, oh, okay, they don't like the new me. They don't like my change in vibe. You know, I'm getting some bad feedback. Let me go back and do what I did before. Well then, guess what? The fans hate you even more because they say, ah, you're just trying to do what you did before, but you're not doing it as good. And you're not doing it as good because you've lost yourself. You're trying to be something that you're not, even though it was once you. You're trying to be the old you and it doesn't work. So this is what the scientist was saying. It's a part of the reason why content creators have burnout. So I'm not calling victim here, by the way. I'm saying, oh guys, I'm burnt out. Oh, they're talking about how he's burnt out. I'm not fucking burnt out. I've been burnt out, but I know what that looks like. Maybe I'm just crying out to anybody who's watching this who happens to be a content creator too. I see some of you. Who watches that kid, Christian Guzman? He looks like he's going a little crazy. Very talented, but he's going through a crisis. Look at Cali Muscle, he's been going crazy for a while, but these are what happened when these guys blow their hearts out their chest by taking a lot of steroids so they can be content creators. It's not like I'm trying to bring awareness like it's autism or some shit. I'm just curious if you know what I'm talking about, dudes. I'm drawing a lot of shit and I got a lot of weight here to press. This is gonna be challenging. Don't let me not impress. I'm gearing all up. I'm putting on all my toys. And I got on some knee stuff today too. All right. a little heavy. Let me speed it up a little bit by lightening it up just a little bit. <clears throat> With this lighter weight. So who do you know? Who do you know? Who did you watch on YouTube many years ago that you wondering where they at right now? Put it down below. Comment down below. Get involved with the conversation about the epidemic of content creator burnout. There's guys that burn out and there's guys that blow out. But there are a lot of bodybuilders on YouTube that have been dying, right? Somebody said this kid, Sam Sulek, who I think he's a nice kid, cool kid, that a lot of people are watching him with hopes that he will die from all the steroid use that he's doing. That's a crazy thing to have said, but I, this is what I heard somebody say. But the whole point is that you're entertaining death while you're entertaining people by taking a whole bunch of steroids so you can be a content creator and then blow your heart out. Now CT has the heart of a little girl. Not even joking. He had a heart transplant. And I believe it was a teenage girl in his heart. I don't want that. Okay, I reloaded. And that's not a knock against CT. That is in praise of science. So here's a tip that I got for how to overcome creator burnout. So this is the same doctor, this is what he said. He gave a lot of really good information on how to overcome this. I got some ideas of my own. But one of his ideas is you have to schedule time no more than one to two hours a week 
where you engage with comments. Comments was huge. He was like, don't check comments, don't check views. There's a bunch of different reasons why he says to do that. Number one is so it's not shitting on you all day long, seven, you know, 24 seven. But he also said that if you organize that time, you can also take action. You, you could do something about the somebody shit on you. Those negative comments are actually there to help you, to show you how to be a better content creator. This is my fourth set, this is my last working set. I'm gonna go as fast as I can here. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip under each time. That's that, that's what I'm doing. It's like I'm humping a big black bag. So as a content creator, I started creating content when there were no smartphones. So I'll make a YouTube video, upload it to my computer, and then interact with it from my computer, not in my pocket, not while I'm driving. So there may be days that go by after uploading a video that I even remember it's there because I would schedule them. Now, I, a lot of times I upload right from my phone and then I'm open to instant feedback. I was creating one-off shots, right? It was just camera, me, talk, upload. Around 2015, 16, vlogs. Oh, I would say even before vlogs, Snapchat. Snapchat, which is short form, follow me around bullshit and then vlogs, which were like the YouTube version that were all hyped up. When I saw people doing that, I was like, fuck this. That's kind of around the time that I, because all my staff were like, my team was saying, Elliot, you gotta do this now. What do you mean? Yeah, be yo Elliot 24 hours a day. Just carry it around, just do it like wherever you're at, at the store, just do it there. I'm like, what the fuck? So it went from being a piece of work that I would do, art that I would do, at a specific place in time and engage with it in a structured way to, no, you gotta do it all day long. Have somebody can't follow you around, go in places, doing things, share your struggles with your wife and children. Are you, are you kidding me? There's no privacy, no privacy. And at that point, I was like, well, I guess, in a lot of ways in my mind, I was like, I guess my days are over. I was like, I'm not doing that. I saw that. And I knew that was an indication as to the nine to five trap that that would become. If you're an entrepreneur, you gotta understand something. Like anybody who's a creator, this is what the doctor said. Anybody who's a creator is a different person. You have to be a little bit of a rebel. There's my rebel flag. A little bit of a rebel to wanna be a creator. Most content creators, that's, the, according to the doctor, that's who they are, you know? The kid with ADHD or kind of autistic. Go get it on my lap first. First, motherfucker. <sighs> Him. I'm gonna take this bitch. <laughs> hey. But a lot of you, even if you aren't a content creator, you consume content from content creators. And so your life has been enhanced or at least entertained by content creators. Wouldn't the mental health of your favorite content creators be something that is important to you, right? Unless you just wanna see us kill ourselves. All right, so one more set. And then content creation has changed 
so much over the years. You know, the viewer has seen, I don't wanna say everything, but pretty much every permutation of a content creation piece there possibly could be. And next, you're gonna be introduced to AI. You're gonna be watching AI versions of me and everybody else. And you're not gonna know what's a fake creator from a real creator. And those creators who learn how to leverage AI may be the next big wave. Because if I can create a version of myself that I'm actually detached from, that might be a totally different experience. But what I think that's gonna do is it's gonna create a pendulum effect where people are gonna want to watch more and more real authentic, not hyper edited, very low cut content like I'm making right here. Okay, cool, so I'm done with this, gonna move on to the next set. We've been talking all about content creators, content creation in this video. I'm curious as we move into the last and final stage in my workout here, how many of you watching have intentions of being a content creator someday? Comment down, down below, let me know down below. I wanna know how, much of, how many of you guys are out there or if you already are a content creator or if you're a burnt out popular creator. Okay, next thing. Here I have two inch grip, fat grip, farmers carry holds. So I'm supposed to pick these up with these two inch grips on here. I don't know what this is gonna look like. This is just happened to be the weight that I was, uh, that was on my bars already. Honestly, I don't even know if I could pick it up. I'm gonna just shut up and try. What do you think, okay? I'm supposed to be timing this, but my timer's over there. So, oh, Simone has a timer. Stopwatch. Ugh. All right. Weird, what the? F <coughs> Not gonna happen. I have to take off at least one plate on each. Holy cow. Holy moly. That was heavy. 90 pounds less each side. Let's see if I can pick it up now. Yes. <coughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's it, that's all. That's all I gotta say to y'all today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of a hybrid between a vlog and a training session. And uh, I'm gonna be back this week. you all probably already seen new Q&A videos, new Yo Elliott videos. Me answering questions, however the fuck I feel like. Hope you all enjoy it. Done.